For the ten years since Alan dove into Cauldron Lake, most of what occurred to him is unknown. We witnessed a few snapshots of this time briefly within the Signal and Rider DLC, as well as within American Nightmare. These events, however, are only a few odd pages in the story of his time there. After ten years since the original Alan Wake and eight years since American Nightmare, we finally get a peek behind the curtain at the torment suffered by the missing writer. Before getting into the plot details, let's talk about the psychological strain this man has been put under. For starters, we can consider Alan as being stuck in a form of solitary confinement. The only individuals he comes into contact with are either figments of his imagination or hostile entities attempting to either kill him outright or release their darkness upon the world. Under the best of circumstances, prolonged periods of solitary confinement can lead to physiological and psychological issues. These can include severe anxiety, paranoia, emotional extremes, and cognitive deterioration, as well as visual and auditory hallucinations. One of the most documented studies on this was done by a Dr. Donald Hebb from the McGill University in Montreal. He isolated them and placed them in a state of sensory deprivation. This included white noise headphones, blackout visors, and apparel to mitigate physical sensations. He originally intended to observe them for up to six weeks. However, most broke and left within the first day or two. The longest, only up to a week. The findings suggested that after only 48 hours of solitude within this dark space, the mind begins to do weird things. One subject reported seeing a group of eyeglasses marching down a road, or another who reached out to turn a non-existent doorknob and felt like he was being electrocuted by it. While this is localized to the mind in real life, for Alan, these kinds of effects can be life and death. The dark place allows whatever unconscious thoughts he has to be manifest into reality, so any hallucinations are real. The Signal and Rider DLC showcase firsthand the dangers of our own psyche. This, however, will be a topic for another video. Dr. Hebb witnessed a two to seven day breaking point for the volunteers. Imagine being trapped in a similar yet more dangerous environment for a full 10 years. We have only witnessed Alan three times within this decade in the dark. When he first entered, during the events of American Nightmare, and within the spiral door or hotline calls seen within AWE. With this final brief look, we finally get an idea to what exactly has occurred within the decade-long imprisonment. American Nightmare was the attempt at a story and was intended to facilitate his escape. The narrative of this manuscript began with the loss of his memory leading up to it, so he was forced to rely on his own writings for guidance. Unfortunately, it did not end the way he wanted. The reunion he desired was only a projection, one he witnessed from within his prison. We learned within AWE that these events were not the only story he wrote during his solitude. There were several. Most, if not all of them, are a complete mystery to us. The troubling thing is that they are a complete mystery to Alan as well. Over the years, it looks as though the memory loss became a reoccurring thing. I know that when I arrive, the clarity of vision I have now may disappear. I've made my plans. I've prepared for this. But I know the transition from the dark place will be hard on me. And not just physically. It may affect my mind. My memory. These pages should help me remember and focus. That's worked for me before. Even if that fails, I think I will be able to trust my instincts. I'm navigating my own story. I'm hoping I'll know where to go and what to do, even if the details elude me. If he doesn't know, I don't think we as the player will ever learn just how many stories he wrote and what unintended consequences came from them. External investigator Lisa Keenum noticed something that could give us a clue. In the report entitled AWE Rising Frequency, she brings attention to the fact that ever since 2010, the rates of AWE cases has been rising. However, she cannot point to the cause for this increase in AWE activity. One possible solution to this question lies in the knowledge that 2010 was the year that Alan vanished into the dark place. In American Nightmare, he manifested the town of Desert Shore into the Arizona desert as the setting piece for that story. 
It is very likely that his other failed attempts created AWEs that the Bureau responded to. While there is no confirmation on this, I believe we may have one example of this happening. Let me know what you think about this. The Kiev AWE from August of 2011 involved an incredibly loud sound coming from an unknown location. Symptoms emerged for those who heard it, including aphasia, or damage to the language center of the brain, and sleep paralysis. This is experienced in hypnagogic and hypnopompic states. For those unaware, let's define these. As is common knowledge, there are two primary states of consciousness, wakefulness and sleep. There is, however, a third state that exists during that transitional period between the two. In this state, dreamlike visions and hallucinations are common. The hypnagogic state is when the individual is falling asleep, while the hypnopompic state is when they are waking up. People have reported visual, auditory, or even physical hallucinations during these mental states. Another common occurrence during this state is the phenomenon known as sleep paralysis. This is when one is conscious during that gray area between sleep and wake, but their body is temporarily paralyzed. Once, these were believed to be caused by demons who sat upon your chest at night, and only after fully waking up would they leave. Now, it is believed the brain paralyzes the muscles during certain stages of REM sleep. While asleep, we are unaware of it, but in a hypnagogic or hypnopompic state, it can be a frightening experience. One possible explanation for the results of Dr. Hebb's research was that through sensory deprivation, he placed the volunteers into an extended mental state somewhere between wake and sleep. Moving back to Kiev, if we trust the Bureau's researchers in their belief that the noise was created by planar friction, we must question what secondary plane of reality is rubbing against ours. This event occurred 11 months after Alan vanished into the dark place. There are places where our world is worn thin, and another reality brushes against ours. One such site is Cauldron Lake near Bright Falls, Washington, but there are others. It is possible that one of Alan's first attempts at return revolved around forcing a new soft spot in reality for him to escape through. Using his own words, it is possible that the planar friction that was the assumed cause of the Kiev AWE was the dark place reality brushing up against ours. As the Bureau's report mentioned, those closer to the epicenter of the event had more intense symptoms. One of which was sleep paralysis. This, as we previously discussed, occurs during a hypnagogic state. Since the dark place represents the unconscious portion of reality, and the prime threshold is the conscious one, the place where the planar friction occurred could easily cause symptoms attributed to the hypnagogic state. Granted, there is no concrete evidence to support this hypothesis, but it is a possibility. There are several other examples including the return trailer found in Quantum Break, the events of this house of dreams, and an untold number of AWEs that we have no knowledge of. The question that is left to us is what happened during these other manuscripts. Did the story end in failure like an American nightmare? Or are some still not complete? It appears that AWE follows the events of one of these manuscripts. Now that Jesse has done her part in putting things into motion, the stage is set for the next story to play out as written. Based upon the ending, it appears there will be a time skip to 2022, where a new Bright Falls AWE is set to begin. But what about the other stories? The ones that were overwritten, forgotten, incomplete? Will they ever show back up in weird and unexpected ways? An example of how these may appear can be found in Robert Heinlein's short story, The Unpleasant Profession of Jonathan Hogue. I won't go into full details about the plot in case anyone is interested in reading it, but I'll give a brief overview. The protagonist is a man who has no memory of what he does during the day. All he knows is that his bills are always paid and he has no money concerns. Hogue hires a pair of detectives, Ted and Cynthia Randall, to follow him and learn what he does. Over the course of the investigation, the detectives begin having dreams, where they are pulled through a mirror into an alternate version of the commercial building Hogue works out of. There, they meet a group of businessmen who introduce themselves as the Sons of the Bird. During one meeting, an aspect of Cynthia seems to be sucked out of her and trapped within a bottle. Upon waking, Ted finds his wife in a coma. 
Skipping to the end of the story, Hoag regains his memories and reveals that he is an art critic. However, the art that he critiques is the world itself. The world that the Randalls live in is simply a student's art project. However, early on, the student made a mistake by creating the Sons of the Bird. Rather than start over, he simply painted over them and continued to the finished product. As such, remnants of his mistake can still be found in the world he created. This mistake proves dangerous as the detectives learn throughout the narrative. If Alan made a similar mistake, it's possible that lingering remnants of the stories he wrote within the Dark Place may still remain. Things that may come back to haunt the world in one form or another. Even if Alan is rescued from his prison, his dark legacy may plague the world and create more stories for the Bureau to resolve. I've written and rewritten, deconstructed, reconstructed, experimented with different voices, changed the style, changed myself, forgotten the language, relearned the language. Have I been here before? Gone down this path before? So what happened in Alan's decade in the dark? Those ten years were spent writing the return manuscript. However, it was trial and error. The first attempt in American Nightmare did not work. So just like the art student in Jonathan Hogue, Alan rewrote the story and tried again and again. Each time he was met with failure, and each time he began the story without any memory of having written it. Just like the reader doesn't know how the story goes, Alan as a character in return has no memory of how it goes either. By definition, his memory has to be altered so he doesn't know the ending, because the characters in a story don't know the ending. They must experience it. With each failure, he tries something new. But just like the Sons of the Bird, remnants of the failed versions of Return remain. My theory is that Mr. the FBI agent Alex Casey, and the version of Thomas Zane we see behind the spiral door are these remnants. In AWE, Jesse was instrumental in making sure the final attempt was successful. All that is left is to allow this version of Return by Alan Wake to proceed. It appears that the new Bright Falls AWE, the one set to begin in 2022, will be where this story will unfold.